Good morning, Facebook. I'm Erica Fernandez with CCISD Communications, and we are live at Clearbrook High School with Brendalyn Trobaugh here. She's an honors biology teacher here at Clearbrook, and we're excited to be joining in on one of your classes today. Tell us exactly what are you guys working on today? So we've been studying evolution, specifically natural selection recently. So the students are looking at different organisms and why might they have certain features or traits, um, also known as adaptations, that might help them or give them a better chance for survival in their environment. So today we're going to be looking at specifically Darwin's finches and how when he discovered these finches, he noticed that they had different characteristics and different traits, but they were varied from inland um, species and why might they have developed this way? Why might they look that way? So the, sim the students are going to be simulating natural selection today. Okay, and so what type of lab will they, like what will they be doing during the lab? So during the lab, um, three students will be birds and they will have uh, different beaks and they're going to find out which beak is best suited for which food resource. So eventually they will discover that some beaks are better suited for different food resources and hopefully the bird would adapt to that food resource and they would uh, be able to go for it rather than other ones so they can survive. Okay, and so what is the goal of today's lesson? So um, the students should be able to know that populations evolve, not species, not uh, individuals, and the goal is for them to look at adaptations and how they are specific to certain food resources, and that is going to give them a better chance at survival. All right, well, we're going to step back and All let right. you go. So you're in Ms. Trobal's biology class. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our lab sheet. All right, so we need to make sure we understand what we're doing today. So we're gonna take a look at our student outcome. So it says, I can demonstrate and explain how natural selection produces changes in populations, not individuals. So yesterday you were given a randomly selected environment and you had to design a bird from scratch who is best suited to live in that environment and you had to look at its beak, you had to look at its claws, you had to look at its feather color. So who can tell me why would we design a beak a certain way? Like, just throw me out some ideas. All right, Haley, what do you got? Um, well, one reason could be for certain Okay, and what if the environments we're working with today only had hard seeds and nuts? What might we need to think about in, in regards to our beak? What would it need to look like? Uh, you need like a uh, more big beak, not necessarily pointed, mm -hmm. but pointed enough so that you can crack open your piece of nuts. Okay, so yesterday we watched a video over evolution and natural selection with Darwin's finches. And what he noticed was that these birds um, all were very similar in shape and size, um, they, but they, they varied greatly in their beak type and their claw type and their feather color. Um, he noticed that they look similar to inland birds. Who can raise their hand and tell me why might all of these birds be different? Who can, who can throw out some ideas? Connor? Good. So what Connor's saying is that the species uh, derive new traits, new adaptations to help it be better suited in the environment. Okay, so think about when we did the natural selection butterfly lab. Um, what did we have to give our butterflies to be the best fit butterfly in this environment? What did we have to give them? Camouflage. What else? a pattern to blend in with its surroundings. And if we didn't, what happened to those butterflies back there? They did what? They were killed off because they stuck out. And the ones that survived are the ones that are going to do what? If I survive, I'm most fit. I survive, then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reproduce. And then I'm going to pass my traits on to my offspring okay so today what we're going to be looking at is why might these finches have these particular characteristics and which finch is best suited for what food resource all right so we have some pre-lab questions that we need to do so let's go ahead and take a look at number one in your own words what is an adaptation who can tell me it's anything what do we have aj 
Okay, so a change in an organism or something they have that gives them a better chance at survival. So that's what we can write for number one, right? Good. And then we can go on to number two, and it says, which adaptations would be beneficial to a bird living in an area with direct sunlight, tiny insects, and seeds for food, and the only vegetation is small bushes and trees with tiny branches and limbs. So we want to circle all the adaptations that would allow this bird to survive. So what do we want to circle? Do we want to circle dark colored feathers? No, and why don't we want to circle dark colored feathers, Andrew? Because what do we know about the sunlight there? What does it say? Is it direct sunlight or is it shaded? It's direct sunlight. So we want light feathers or dark feathers? Light feathers. So we want to circle light colored feathers. And what beak might be best suited for the type of insects and seeds there? Tiny in shape or large curved beak? Okay, so we want to circle that one. And we have small, tiny branches to uh, perch on. So do we want tiny feet or do we want large feet with big claws? Tiny feet. Good. All right. So let's look at these next two beak shapes because that's going to directly help us in the lab today. We'll answer those and we'll move on to our lab. So it says, which of the following beak shapes would be best suited for crushing hard seeds and nut? Do we want to pick one, two, three, or four? Two. Okay, we want to pick two. And then the next one, which of the following beak shapes would be best suited for reaching down into flowers for nectar? One, two, three, or four? Three. So we look at the shape. All right. Okay, so let's go ahead and flip over onto the back so we can see what our procedure is going to be. And we're going to do this step by step together. So first and foremost, you have your lab supplies at your table. And that's what you're going to be using during the lab. But before we get to that, we need to decide the role. So there's going to be four people in a group. Uh, these two tables right here, y'all are going to join together. So girls, you can grab your chair and come sit on the other side of this. That way you can join in with that one. Uh, boys in the back, y'all are going to be working with that box. And we will come help you in just a second. All right, so what you need to decide is who's going to be the three birds, and you're going to write your name down. Are you going to be the tweezer beak bird, the clothespin bird, or the spoon beak bird? So three of you are going to be birds. The remaining person is going to be the recorder and the ornithologist. That means they're going to make sure that the birds are doing what they're supposed to. So I'm going to give you 30 seconds to decide who's going to be who, and you're going to write your name in the lines provided. Ready, go. So Miss Knox will work with y'all. She'll help, she'll help y'all. That way we can make sure y'all are. Okay. So we have beaks. Who's going to be our beaked birds? Elijah. Okay, these three. And you're going to be the recorder? Okay, so write your name on the right line. And do y'all know which beak you're going to be? Yep. And who's y'all's recorder? Oh, y'all only have three. Okay, so that's fine. You just need beaks. And then y'all, when you're done with each section, you just record your data. Okay. All right, does everybody have who's what beak and who's our recorder? Yes, thumbs up? All right. Okay, so here we go. Each group member needs to pick up and hold their beak. So look inside your lab supplies, remove the basket, and set it on the table. And go ahead and grab the beak that you are. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and remove our basket out. And we're going to find the beak that we are, and we're going to take those out. Move this down here. We'll put Connor's binder down here. And that'll give us some room. Okay. And y'all need uh, this for sure. This is your feeding habitat. Okay. Right. Does everybody have their beaks? Okay. Step number two. Each group member that is a bird needs to grab a cup. Okay. So if you're a bird, you need to grab a cup. This cup's going to represent your stomach. Um, this is where all the food that you collect in the habitat is going to go. So make sure you have a cup. If you're a bird at the point when we are hunting in the environment, you are going to have to stand up to kind of give yourself leverage to be able to reach into the box. You want to make sure that the box is in the center of the table so that all birds have equal access to the habitat. Okay? All right. So um, go ahead and find the container marked rubber bands and evenly spread this out into the habitat. 
around the entire box. So go ahead and find our rubber band and evenly spread it out in the habitat. Okay, so our rubber bands represent worms, right? So you are going to be given a certain amount of time, 30 seconds, for your birds to hunt. So the um, spoon, those need to be turned like a beak, like this, right? So you're going to be using them kind of like chopsticks, like a beak, in order to pick up. Um, the clothespin, you push on the ends, all right, and you grab one, you put it in your cup, and then the tweezers, same thing. So you're going to have 30 seconds to hunt. You collect the resource. If, remember, if you're the spoons, you have to use both spoons at the same time, not one spoon, and they need to be used like a beak. Okay, are we ready? Okay, so go ahead and grab your beaks on your mark. Get set. Go. You don't have what? Where are they? Oh, dear. Let me give you another clothespin. Okay, there you go. You ready? There you go. Go ahead. 15 seconds left. There you go. And stop. All right, so what we need to do now is you need to count individually how many worms you gathered and record the data next to your beak type. So if you were the spoons, you're going to count how many worms you gathered and write it on the data table. Okay, if you were the tweezer, you're going to count and you're going to write it on the data table. Same thing with the clothespin. Once everybody's recorded their data, the person who is the recorder, you can go ahead and start cleaning up the inside of the box. You want to put all of the rubber bands that are in the habitat back into the container. When they are done counting, they will pour theirs into the container. Here you go. Nat, we're down tweezers. We're missing tweezers. I gave him a clothespin for now, but I don't, I don't know. I guess I was needed two and not one. No, I think it's fine. Right, so we've recorded our data in our data table. Just do yours at the end. We can share data. Okay, next we need to go ahead and grab our rice, bean, and lentils. Rice, bean, and lentils. We're going to evenly distribute that in the habitat, so go ahead and do that. Go ahead and grab your beaks and your stomachs. We're going to have 30 seconds, all of it. Mm -hmm. On your mark, get set, go. You can two hand them, Jackson. Yeah. So tiny beak, tiny food, right? Yeah. Fifteen seconds. And stop. Okay, birds, go ahead and count the amount of food you gathered. Ornithologist, recorder, go ahead and get what's remaining in the habitat, place it back into the container. There you go, Carlos. He 
so how did your beak do in this one, Gavin? Which one did you go for? Did you go for the beans? And they like, what? You only got four? Okay. So just um, like that. Here's, here's your other beak part. Every single one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, every single one. You got it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There you go. Got it? You count them. No, you count them all together. They're all together. Everything. How many total did you get? Yes. You, you can do it like that as long as you're using two. Uh-huh. Just like that. Yep. Yeah, good. They're, they're upset with the bird because it's destroying the habitat and the food. It's okay. It'll all come back in the end when you figure out which one's best suited. All right. Our recorder and our ornithologist, go ahead and grab our last food resource. These are our hard seeds and nut candies and distribute that into the habitat. You can keep counting, it's okay. All right, grab your beaks. Who's your recorder? Carlos, you can go finish counting for him while he's grabbing food. So he ended on what number, Gavin? 36. So just keep adding to it. That'll help. All right, are we ready? On your mark, get set, go. Like if you two-hand it with like a beak, it might be better with for these candies. Two-hand it like this. Oh, I can do that? Yeah, because that's the shape of that beak. Like a, like a parrot beak. There you go. Yeah, like that. Yeah. There you go, Rhett. Uh -huh. There you go, Ahmad. <laughs> Why would you die, Zaya? You can't pick any food. You can't, can you open it, pinch it real hard and open the clothespin all the way up? No? Oh. The struggle. And stop. Go ahead and count your food resources, birds. Write it in your chart. Recorders and ornithologists, go ahead and get it out of the habitat and back into the containers. And scoot it off. Cool. Yeah. Here, you do it. I'll put it right here. There we go. Seventeen. It's okay. Two hands. No, no, no. Like this, bud. Look. There we go. There we go. This is yours. There we go. Did you get them all counted, Carlos? Okay, so now you can put it back into that container. Just swipe it off onto the side. There you go. Just put that container down there on the edge, Zaya, and swipe it into your hand. There you go. And this one. Back. All right, so birds. Raise your hand if you have an idea what food resource is best suited for your beak. Raise your hand if after doing each trial, you think you know what food resource is best suited for your beak. Raise your hand. All right, uh, Isabel, what do you think is best suited for your beak? And tell us what beak you have first. You have the tweezer beak. And what food resource is best suited for you? The rubber bands. The rubber bands. And why is it best suited for your beak? 
easier to pick them up. Okay, what environment would you not survive in? What food resource environment would, would not be good for you? Was there anyone that you, you struggled with? Not really, so your beak was advantageous to all of them? Okay, did anybody, um, I think Zaya, you said, if I was in this environment, I am going to die. And why would your bird die, Zaya? We died in almost all of them. You died in almost all so, of them? Because the rubber bands, I was only able to get six. Okay. And the small seeds and insects, I got one. Okay. And the hard seeds and nuts, I got two. Okay, so you were struggling with your beak. Yes. So what's going to happen next is we're going to put all the food resources in at the same time. So what do you think your bird should do at this point? Go for what? Or what would Isabel do in this case if we put all of them in? She would go for what? The worms because it was best suited for her beak. So if she wants to survive, we're going to go for the ones that is best suited for our beak. So uh, recorders um, and other birds, y'all can help grab all three food resources and dump them all into the box. All right, then we're going to dump our worms inside. All right, birds, go ahead and grab your beaks. And we got 30 seconds with all food resources. Ready, set, go. Rubber bands, rubber bands. Is it because it's curved on the end? Yeah. You dominating over here, Andrew. Girl, you know you shouldn't have given him the good beaks. <laughs> And stop. All right, we're going to count all of our food resources and we're going to write it in the all column on our data table. Okay, recorders, you're going to go ahead and start removing each individual resource and putting it into the correct container. Yeah, these are the easiest ones. We get out all the big ones and then we can just slide the seeds and stuff. Okay. So I think it's easiest to remove the runt candies first then the uh, worm rubber bands, and then we'll slide the seeds into the container. Every individual one, it's all gonna go into that last column for everything. So how many total did you get? How many total? So everything you captured, just these four? Okay, so all of it together. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, awesome. So we're gonna put those in the rubber band and these into the candy with Carlos's. Okay. It's okay. So we're gonna count what first? Cause they all together. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Keep counting. Put those in there. We've done these. Okay, so we're going to put those in there. And we're going to continue counting. So 17, start here. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. We'll close that up, put it back in here. 24, now we're on to here. 
Okay, so we'll just set it over here and then slide up. 25, 26, okay. 27, keep going. All right. total. Okay, so then we'll put all of our stuff back, sanitize our hands, and put it back in the basket. All right, I'm going to talk to y'all for just a second so you know what our expectations are moving into the graphing and data section. So y'all just go ahead and uh, make sure you're listening, especially our recorders, since they're not counting. So in this section, we have recorded our data. So we had a just worms trial, just hard seeds and nuts trial, and just tiny insects and seeds trial. And then we did everything together. On the next page, you are going to create a bar graph using the data you collected in the lab. So you are going to use the directions to help you. When you finish the graph, you can move on to the analysis questions. Okay, so from today, who can kind of summarize what we were trying to learn today, what we were trying to simulate? Does anybody have anything good that they can kind of bring some closure to what we were trying to do today? All right, Haley, what do you got? Okay, so she's saying that um, their adaptations, their beak structure um, affected their ability to gather certain food resources. Okay, if all of these birds and all of these food resources were in the same place at the same time, would these birds fight for resources or would they be able to survive and cohabitate in the same area at the same time? What do y'all think? Um, would they fight? Raise your hand if you think they'd fight. Okay, raise your hand if you think they would live and cohabitate together. Okay, um, so Connor, why do you think they would cohabitate together? Good, so if we had them all living in the same place at the same time with these different food resources, then ideally, because each beak is suited better for different food resources, then they should be able to survive in the same place. What if we put all three birds on one of these small islands in the Galapagos and we only had the worms available to them? Raise your hand if you think they would fight. Okay, raise your hand if you think they would cohabitate peacefully. Okay, and who can tell me why they would fight? Leslie, can you tell me why they would fight in this particular environment if they only had worms? All right, we've been live inside Ms. Trowball's class here at Clearbrook High School. So the only food resource they have, and are all the beaks best suited to that? Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and start creating our graphs. 